everybody. Uh, so this is going to be a follow-up video to the first one that I did uh, about the Arc Droid, um, where I covered some of the problems and tr troubleshooting steps um, that I went through uh, and the solutions that I had in that video. This is going to hopefully give a little bit more clarity to those, go a little bit more in-depth, and sort of focus in on some of the main issues that I think um, are plaguing most people out there in getting this thing set up reliably. So I did get uh, a good calibration on the machine um, and after I left it for a couple days came back uh, started it up and everything was all wonky again. So um, I have figured out now what was causing that and we'll go into that but uh, there are a few issues uh, to go over uh, before we get to that. So the calibration with this machine is important um, but in order for that calibration to work we have to have a good homing procedure. And um, there's a couple things that can really throw that whole process off. So I'd like to go over those, uh, I think, first of all. Um, so one of the things to watch out for that I noticed early on with this um, is that if the arm is tucked up, uh, sort of like that, and you just hit home, uh, you're going to have a major problem because uh, it's going to swing the bigger portion, this inside portion of the arm. It's going to want to rotate that over first. If this arm is tucked in, uh, the shorter arm will actually make contact with its homing switch before the big arm hits its homing switch. And if that happens, uh, it will just bounce off um, the shorter arm switch and then it will rehome uh, to that same switch again, having never gone back with the, the bigger arm and hit its homing switch. So um, if that happens, then it's just going to be all out of whack. You're done before you even start. So you just want to make sure that um, this front part of the arm is just sort of swung out there a little bit so that this bigger arm can come in contact with its switch first. Uh, okay, easy enough. Okay, so now we'll get on to the main thing with this and getting your issues sorted out. And it seems to be uh, the drive pulleys that are inside. These, the set screws on those uh, smaller gear pulleys that are in there, those need to be insanely tight. There is no flat spot on the shafts for these drive motors. Um, and if they've loosened up once and they've spun it all uh, and they create a little, little bit of a mark on the, uh, on the shaft itself, uh, more than likely they're going to move again. They need to be desperately tight, like to the point that you're almost going to uh, round out the head on the screw. As soon as I did that, uh, I was having issues. Uh, I turned the machine back on, uh, hit home, it homed up, and everything was good. No more ovals or, or anything like that. I think because of the levering action that the belts and stuff have, you have to make sure that those pulley gears uh, that are on those shafts for those motors, they are super tight. So anyway, let's go over that right now. Okay, so we're going to look at how to take this cover off. Really simple. There's six screws um, that connect this, and there's a seventh that you may need to take out depending on how tightly things are fit together. Um, these two rubber plugs on the front, those are just for adjusting your belt tension for your drive belts. Um, anyway, uh, I think it's a two and a half, yeah, two and a half millimeter um, hex or Allen key is what you need. Um, and over here by your connection ports, there's two screws here. Uh, you're going to undo those two. Um, there's two more on the exact opposite side uh, over here. And then on the front, there's one here and one on the opposite side, uh, same place. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. cover off. Um, your little drive pulleys are right inside here uh, and you have to rotate these arms to get them in the proper orientation to be able to see where those set screws are. Um, so what I wanted to cover here, normally most people get uh, you know sets of Allen keys or whatever um, for this type of thing. Pretty cheap. The problem with these is um, when you're going in this way like this you can pretty much only reach in there really well with, with the ball end. Um, and the problem with that is, number one, that it's hard to get uh, enough of a lever on it to get really, really tight. 
here, but also these ball ends on all of these, they're not sized as well, and the, the portion that actually is two millimeter that's going to grip is actually out a little bit. So even with the seated all the way down in, you're likely gonna get to the point where that wants to round out before um, you can actually get enough torque on it to really get that, that set screw to dig in. So these you might as well just, just about forget about it because even if you get a lever and put on the end of that, there's no way that you can get enough torque even holding it in there square. Pretty much impossible. What you really need um, are a set of like hex or hex driver bits. This one here I just grabbed. Uh, this is part of my Weha tool set. Um, you know, really high quality, good fitting bits. Um, that fit really tight and snugly and square. They don't have a great big uh, beveled edge on them that, that sticks way out there. So you can seat all the way down into the bottom of that screw um, and get in there. And even with a smaller handle, you can get right down in there, hold tension in, down on it and really crank down on them. And by the time you get to the point where the head wants to round out, you've got these good and tight. Um, you'll get a lot more torque on it and you'll actually find that you're able to get uh, another like you know sixteenth to eighth of a turn on them doing it that way. Um, if you use the socket style type I would be careful with those. Um, really grip up towards the head on your socket because it, it's really easy to get or at least I've found with with socket drivers um, it's really easy to get off on just a little bit of an angle and end up uh, over torquing it and rounding the head out early on those before you've really got them seated in so uh, and then what I did, I got just a little tiny bit of Loctite uh, and just, you can either from the tip of the bottle um, or take something like a toothpick and just run a little bit in down along the side where it goes on the threads. So it, once it dries, it'll sort of lock those screws in there because there is a little bit of vibration, the little bit of notchiness that they have um, and the vibration of the machine running. Uh, that could loosen those screws up a little bit, and I've had that be an issue on other CNC machines um, where just the vibration is enough sometimes to, to loosen them up. So I just put a little tiny bit of that blue Loctite on there. So it may not be something that you want to do. Um, you may want to go right to disassembling these motors and putting a flat spot on the shaft. I, I don't know. If you wanted to take those set screws right out, get a little bit of nail polish on, then put them in and really torque them down tight. Um, that might be a better option for you, or even uh, liquid electrical tape. You get a little bit of that on the threads um, and then run them in, and that stuff is usually light enough. You'll be able to, to break, them, break them free when you need to. Uh, so short of that, while you're in here, um, you might as well just check, check your belts to make sure that they've got some tension on them, uh, especially if you had to loosen them off, uh, if you had one of these pulleys really break free. Um, just tension them back up again. They don't need to be super tight, but you want them to be snug um, just so that they're not going to slip on these gears. Don't over tighten them because you're just going to stretch out your belts and prematurely wear them. Um, and you may even want to realign your pulleys a little bit just to make sure that the edge of your belts aren't wearing on the upper or lower portions um, against these gears uh, as they're going on and off. But you know, it's there's a little bit of a range there where they can be in. Um, and you can just check the movement by moving it with your hand there and seeing how it runs. So so yeah, those are the steps I've gone through. Those are some of the solutions I've found. And uh, the more that I've dug into this, it all sort of, sort of makes sense. So hopefully uh, now we can get on to making some more videos. Uh, I'm gonna make a water table for this thing and I've already started building it. Uh, I've got some rails cut there. Um, and so we'll get into some of that. I, I don't think I'm gonna do a detailed video on it. I'll probably just sort of do an overview, but um, then we can get on to videos of, you know, cutting some stuff and figuring out some settings. So thanks a lot, everyone. We'll uh, see you around next time.